tecnología.
afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, very warm welcome to you all. It's become traditional that we begin the graduation ceremony with the lighting of the lamp. This year we'd like to invite some of our departing faculty uh, to light the lamp. So please step up. Pramod, Sheila, Liam Zawei, Ingrid, Henning. Good afternoon. It's wonderful to see so many parents here, so many friends and family. It's also wonderful that the students have got 100% attendance at this particular class. <laughs> even, even though your lateness has been noted. <laughs> so a very warm welcome to parents, families and friends of the graduating class of 2015. For those of you who made it up the hill, and also those who are watching by video link from afar, I know we have online new students and former students, new faculty and former faculty, new parents, old parents, older parents, and grandparents. I also, for, your, for you particularly as students, acknowledge and welcome some of your co-years who started out with you two years ago but for various reasons did not continue. I know some of them are online today, and today we are thinking also about you. As the year started out, our UWC values were put to the test. What would we do with the troubles, troublesome students from West Africa? Hmm. Responding to the global panic, we received emails of concern. What actions were we taking? Exclude them, isolate them, contain them. Would we close the school? In probability terms, our lovable students were as likely to have Ebola as you or me, but they found themselves asked to sleep in isolation in case they sneezed, and to be sure we had taken every precaution, they had their temperatures taken three times a day. We waited for the quarantine period to be over, but as luck would have it, Tony sneezed. <laughs> temperature was detected, so we were duty-bound to follow protocol and inform the authorities. The authorities in Pune were delighted. They had a test case for their specially prepared and as yet totally empty 40-bed hospital. The men in white suits arrived, somehow the local media was informed, and UWC Mahindra College was on the front pages with the first suspected Ebola case in India. Even at times it seemed like a chapter from a Tom Sharp novel, but for Tony, it was a wild and unwelcome adventure. For those here trying to work out who to tell, what and when, it was a challenge. Thankfully, by the time the news hit the international press, we'd already written to three letters to parents and told you not to worry. Tony was back on campus, a bit bewildered, 
but no worse for wear. And a few days later, on page nine, in the small print, it stated that UWC Mahindra College did not, in fact, have the first Ebola case in India. <laughs> this year has seen a surge of interest from parents wanting to be UWC students. Our oversubscribed guest accommodation was at times bursting. Local guest houses overbooked, bikes booked out, giant courtyards, caged football, swimming pool lawn relaxation, global politics, and morning yoga. We are challenged enough by our students, but parents made it even more fun. Hmm. The bottle of wine in my daughter's fridge is actually a present for you. <laughs> it has been a pleasure to see you all. Your recognition and appreciation for the work we do is motivational and helps when times are tough. Thank you for the trust you place in the college and the faculty who work here. At this point, I'd like to say thank you particularly for those who've given the caution money to fund a scholarship for a student from Nepal. And we're significantly far down the path to be able to fund a student for the intake in September 2016. So to you and the faculty for that support, thank you very much. Sometimes students take for granted the fact that an adult lives 20 meters from their house, and more significantly, 20 meters from their birthday party. <laughs> Who would live on a hill far away from Starbucks and E-Square with 240 adolescents? Hmm. Only those who believe that their work will make the world a better, safer, more peaceful and sustainable place, and only those who believe in our students. Representing faculty who give their heart and soul, I'd like to thank particularly Pramod and Sheila Menon for the contribution they have made, especially to their students. We also say, we also say farewell, although he had to leave yesterday because of the plight of the FRO and visas. We also say farewell to Liam Goodacre, who has taught philosophy, Lauren Tadler, and Liam has energized our community to be more sustainable by trying to make his own clothes. We wish him and Anne every possible happiness in the future. Henning. So, Henning, Henning. You've been an inspiration to three generations of students and faculty. You've entertained and challenged us with your amazing theatrical performances. Thank you. And, and Ingrid stepped into a back-breaking, excuse the pun, role as head of student life. Ingrid, a role which you took on with full energy and commitment. Thank you. Ingrid, Ingrid and Henning both move on to UWC Robert Bosch. I also thank our volunteers, let me say all the names first, Ben, Rita, Felipe and Gunvant. For the, for the amazing contribution they have made to the college. It's a testament to our community that such individuals, including the youngest and oldest working in any UWC, commit themselves so fully to the work we do. Ben could not leave his Royal Enfield motorbike behind, and so he has to return next year to support our work, to make it worthwhile buying that bike. <laughs> Rita goes on to work at UWC Mostar, and our young Pavarotti has sung his way from Singapore through India, and he moves on to Germany. Finally, Agent Govindji. <laughs> Gunvant Govindji. Gunvant moves off to, back home to South Africa. Thank you to you all. The six foundation course students also graduate. Sushma, Savannah, Akshay, Amar, Ati, and Vandana. Where, where are you? Where are you sitting? Are you sitting together? We praise you very much for your spirit of adventure, acknowledge your courage, and appreciate very much your commitment and determination. Well done. Now to you guys, our second years. Three things I want to emphasize. Three things to save you all. And that was a very bad joke because I got the thing from the Lord of the Rings wrong. <laughs> anyway, 
compassion, trust, and community. You have all contributed to a very positive year. A year marked by your appreciation of people and place. A year not without its challenges, but a year which needed a calm foundation and focus. Faculty commented from the start about the balance you showed and the commitment of many of you has been outstanding. You accepted happiness as a choice. Happiness is an attitude of mind and it's contagious. You radiate positive energy and it will affect the state of mind of others. Matthew Ricard said, our natural state of mind when it is not misconstrued under the power of negative thoughts is perfection. If you wish to change anything, it is essential to inspire hope and confidence, since that is what people lack most and need most in our times. Follow your passion. Figure out what it is that you love and who you really are. Have the courage to do that. The only courage that you really ever need is the courage to follow your dreams. Be passionate, dream big, and change the world. Secondly, to realize your dreams, you must trust. Trust those who share your lives and your homes. You will live in torment if you don't trust. In trusting, you become a positive catalyst for peace. It is invitational and it builds community. I wonder when I hear that. Be generous and trust the intentions of others, but just as you learn from failure, also learn from experience. Question and challenge and investigate. But do not bury your trust, whatever challenges it has faced. As a UWC graduate, have the trust in yourself to place trust in others, and you will achieve more than you dream, personally and in your professional life. Reach for the furthest star, and you may not get there, but you'll get somewhere very interesting. And finally, community. So how to build and be critical in a small community? Kurt Hahn set up his first school in Germany to educate for democracy. The late Nelson Mandela uh, demanded public accountability, and UWCs are established to bring young people together to explore the politics of community. To be effective, 21st century organizations must welcome critical feedback. Learning to critically question and to accept criticism, manage change and communicate through conflict without violence. In our families, our friendship groups and our local communities is essential. Cultivate the capacity to communicate non-violently and build positive communities. So, it is May 2025. It's just before your 10-year reunion, can you believe? You are driving along in your new and very smart two-seater sports car. <laughs> A Mahindra something or other turbo. It's, it's the latest...